This is Larry Norris making your day with an article I wrote on Cameron Forbes, after whom Forbes Park was named. And I tell you his story. William Cameron Forbes was the American Governor General in the Philippines from 1909 to 1913 under President William Howard Taft. He was a polo enthusiast who picked his Harvard staff on the basis of their ability to wield a good mallet and ride a horse. As a good Republican, he was strongly opposed to Filipino independence, presumably among other things because the withdrawal of the U.S. Treasury would leave him with no polo mounts and no facilities to play his favorite sport. And in his honor, the Ayala Sabel clan named Forbes Park under him and forever foisted the Manila Polo Club on us Filipinos. My grandfather, who was a revolutionary, a senator, and a congressman before the war, used to tell me the history of the Philippines during the Spanish and early American occupation. And he mentioned that Governor General Forbes was an idiot. But I did not believe him because he regarded all Americans in the Philippines as near their house with a single digit IQ. But then I met Cameron Forbes personally. Really, I did. And now I believe my grandfather. Now, why? After World War II, when I was studying in MIT, Vicky and Mandy Abad Santos, daughters of our hero, Jose Abad Santos, who married two Madrigal brothers, Dolly and Neneng Buencamino, cousins of my wife and descendants of Felipe Buencamino, who reportedly had General Antonio Luna assassinated, and Rosie Osmeña, the daughter of President Sergio Osmeña Sr came by train from Mills College to Boston in dead winter. I drove them. Well, actually, I, I drove the car while they were pushing it because the car stopped to a suburb where they were guests of William Cameron Forbes, who was already 78 years old, living alone with his sister in a fabulous mansion fronting a polo field. He had rooms all paneled with Philippine woods and a piano of solid nara which sounded like a guitar trapped in a closet because solid nara is not a good sounding board for a piano. More about this after these messages. This is Larry Naras making your day by telling the story of Cameron Forbes, after whom Forbes Park was named. Cameron Forbes served us an elegant dinner. Still a bachelor, he may have been gay, for as far as I know. Forbes wore a tuxedo, a formal monkey suit for dinner. And the dinner was pure New England. Boston baked beans, stuffed turkey with cranberry jelly, red wine, and apple pie. He had uniformed Filipino mage who delighted to talk to us in half-forgotten Tagalog. In the girls' guest room, there was a secret door at the back of a closet that led to what Dolly Camino described as Bluebird's Chamber with lighted candles and all sorts of strange figurines. One had to light incense sticks to enter another room with a magic view of Taj Mahal in miniature. Now, this fellow, Governor General Forbes in 1909, governed the Philippines with vague generalities. He was a proper Bostonian, distinct from old Bostonians like the Cabots and the Lowells, who held office properly. Never did any undistinguished man hold a distinguished office in a more undistinguished fashion. To promote American business, Cameron Force expelled Chinese businessmen from the Philippines by tens of thousands by virtue of no power whatsoever legally vested in him. 
Forbes represented the powerful Republican nobles back home, whose interest was to keep the Philippines forever an American colony. Theodore Roosevelt described Forbes as a conservative, one who could only be bribed by money he already has. In 1921, Republican President Warren Harding, uh, who was involved in the Tibet Dome scandal, sent the Wood Force mission to determine if the Philippines was ready for total independence. At the time, Filipinos held the entire legislature, five out of six of the cabinet positions, four out of nine in the Supreme Court, Attorney General, Solicitor General, and all the fiscals of the Philippines were Filipinos. 53 out of 55 judges were Filipinos. All 893 municipal presidents, 45 out of 48 provincial governors, all justices of the peace. 97% of the constabulary officers were Filipinos. 24 out of 28 bureau chiefs were Filipinos. 99% of the civil service. In other words, Filipinos in effect exercised all the domestic powers of a sovereign state. Yet, Cameron Forbes and his colleague Leonard Wood insisted that the Philippines was not ready for independence. My grandfather, Senator Don Daniel Maramba, told me he was stupid. He's right. Forbes Park was named after an idiot. This is Larry Anaris making your day, saying good day, God bless you. Thank you very much for being with us. Till next time, hasta la bye-bye.